How many games do you think are played in today's society that actually date back centuries? For example, if I mentioned the game of chess, would you believe that this game originated about the sixth century in India? What if I mentioned backgammon? Did you realize that backgammon originated in Mesopotamia about 4,500 years ago? So for today, I would like to show you some historic examples in museums of different board games and give you a little more information on these medieval games. So welcome to 16th century board games. Today, I'm specifically focusing on the 16th century games, but many of these games actually predate the 16th century, so you can find them in the medieval time period as well as the Renaissance. So for the first board game I'd like to talk about, that is the game of chess. This is an Indian game that dates back to at least the 6th century AD, and it was originally known as Chaturanga. If I mispronounced that, I'm sorry, please correct me. On the left-hand side is a painting. It is at the Statliche Museum, and this painting is from about 1508, and as you can see, they are playing the game of chess. On the right-hand side is a painting with two sisters playing with two ladies, another sister and an older lady, watching them play the game. This game is from, or well, this painting is from 1555, and as you can see, with the game of chess, if you look at the pieces, I will have another video um, on my YouTube channel that explains what all of the different pieces are and how they move. But you can see the pieces in the paintings here of the knight, the rook, the pawn. For example, on the painting on the right, if you look right about where her white collar is on her wrist, right beneath that, you will see a piece that looks like it has a horse's head on it. That is the knight. And here are some more examples of chess boards in history. On the left-hand side is a chess board that is Spanish. It's from about 1500 and it's made of wood and ivory and it's at the Victorian Albert Museum in London. On the right-hand side is another chess board and this one is, it's just circa 16th century. It's kind of hard to put a specific date on when this chess board was made, but it's made of ebony and ivory, and it's also at the v &A Museum. I will have separate videos to explain how to play the game of chess if you are interested in learning how to play this game. Another medieval game is backgammon. On the left-hand side is a picture from about the 16th century. It's Flemish, and it's actually called a game of backgammon. In the middle is an example of a backgammon board, as well as on the right. On the right, this board is from about the 16th century. Backgammon originally emerged from Mesopotamia about 4,500 years ago. And modern backgammon's most memorable characteristic is its board, which features 24 narrow triangles that are divided into two sets of 12. Then players roll pairs of dice to determine movement, across these geometric areas. The earliest conceivable ancestor of what is now called backgammon is the Royal Game of Ur. And for our next board game, we have Alquerque. I will have a separate video explaining step-by-step -step on how to play this game. It's simple but fun. This game was first mentioned about the 10th century in the Book of Songs as Kirkat, which is its Arabic name. Later, it was documented in the Libro de los Juegos in 1283, which this book was commissioned by Alfonso X of Castile in Spain. On the top left-hand side, you will see a painting here, and that's from about 1338 to 1410 is when the, the library has it dated. But if you look closely, you can see there's an Alquerque board that they are playing on. On the bottom left-hand side is another painting. This is from 1283, and you can see the men are playing a game of Alquerque. On the right-hand side, I find this to be most interesting because this 
Alquerque board is actually carved into a windowsill in a window at Hampton Court Palace. And if you look more into older buildings, I have um, found on documentaries where like if they are, were restoring say an old cathedral or like this Hampton Court Palace, where you will find little boards like this either carved in the windowsill or you might find boards like this or other board games carved into the rafters inside a cathedral, which the players would have played on when they weren't working. Or you also would have found board games like this carved on the underneath side of tables, which when diners would sit down to eat, you would set up the tables sort of like a trestle and you would eat. And then when you were done eating, these tables, these boards, be flipped over and then you had the board games carved into the table and that is where the phrase board game comes from. It's literally games carved into the board which is the table. For our next board game we have Nine Men's Morris. Nine Men's Morris was even mentioned in one of Shakespeare's plays. It, the quote says Nine Men's Morris is filled up with mud. On the left hand side is a Nine Men's Morris board game that is from about 1560. It's German and it is at the Met Museum. On the right hand side is a painting and here it, we can see the men are playing Nine Men's Morris and this is from about the 13th century and it is Spanish. The word Morris comes from the Latin word Morellus, meaning game piece. This game is depicted in the 1283 book from Toledo, Spain called El Libro de los Juegos. Nine Men's Morris is comparable to modern day checkers. It was played as early as the 1400 BC when Egyptian workmen building the Temple of Kerna inscribed a Morris board onto a roofing slab. How cool is that? For the next historic board game, we have the Game of the Goose. This one, I first learned how to play while at Golf Wars a few years ago, and it was a lot of fun. It can be a bit overwhelming at the very beginning just to remember what exactly you're supposed to do and when, but once you get the hang of it, it's a lot of fun. On the left-hand side is a board from about the late 16th century. It's Indian, and it is at the Met Museum. On the right hand side is a board game from the 19th century and it's Italian and it is at the British Museum. If you're interested in a free principal board, there is a website link on the top left corner. This game was first mentioned in Italy in 1480. It was popular in the Medici court. Duke Francesco de Medici first gifted the game, then called if I mispronounced this, I'm sorry, Gioco del o Oca to Philip II of Spain between 1574 and 1587. It was documented in June 1597 by John Wolfe, who attested that the game was played in London. The aim of the game is to get your counter to the center of the board, moving counterclockwise according to the roll of the die. Some spaces are accompanied by special rules. For example, if you land on the number 58, you must start the game again. Or if you land on the number 19, you may pay a forfeit and drink until your next turn. Players must score a perfect 63 to win the game. If you're interested in other historical board games, you have, if I mispronounce these names, I'm sorry, please correct me. And just put your corrections in the comments below. But we have other board games such as Senate, Mahan, Tafel, Ludus Latrin Calorum, which is Roman, Patoli, Go, Mancala, Wari, and Pachisi. Now, if you are going to play any of these historic board games in a Renaissance or medieval setting, such as a Renaissance festival or at an SCA event, the SCA is the Society for Creative Anachronism. If you would like more information, I'll post it below. But if you're going to play these games, then I highly recommend having your very own gambling box. But just so you know, we don't gamble with money. We gamble with, for example, 
reaching into my box here. And I have a variety of things in my hand right here. I have coins that I have coined myself. I have beads that I have made. These are glass beads. Or if you go to an event, you might get a site token. You can gamble with site tokens. You can gamble with other things, like this is another site token. Here is a site token. You might even just simply find a pretty rock. So it's you want to gamble with fun little trinkets that you don't mind losing if you lose your hand in that particular medieval game. The other thing with gambling with little tokens is this is a great way to show off your craft. For example, if you do glasswork, then you can make simple little beads and put that in your gambling box and then that's a way that you can pass around your artwork just the same if you do wire wrapping or here's another example of glasswork this is not mine this is one that i received so if you make your own tokens then not only can you put your own tokens in your gambling box to gamble with and then maybe spread your tokens to other people but also if you attend an arts and sciences event and you're just blown away by someone's craftsmanship in their entry, then that's also a way to give them a, one of your tokens as a sign of appreciation. For example, here's one token that I have received and here's another token that I have received. This was made by a blacksmith and it's a, just a very small little, it's like a little knife, but actually, I like to wear this on my belt with my one of my biking outfits. The tokens in your gambling box don't have to be intricate. For example, one token I have is actually just a cinnamon stick with a little ribbon around it. Or instead of your traditional dice like this, I also have this dice. And this is actually one that my blacksmith husband created. I have another one right here that is larger. But as you can see, you can count the dots right here to know if that's two and that is six. So it's a way to show off your craftsmanship. Like I said, my blacksmith husband made this, but also you can have just a simple dice. It's fun to play with. But in history, there were not just board games. We also have card games. On the left-hand side is a painting from about 1550 to 1599 and it's called The Card Players. And as you can see, the lady on the left-hand side, she is holding a set of cards and she's showing the audience her cards. And you can see there are coins on the table, so obviously they are gambling with their cards. On the right-hand side is another example. This particular painting, even though they are dressed in 16th century clothing, you can tell it looks like Henry VIII on the far right side. The painting style to me does not say 16th century, so I'm guessing this painting was done at a later period of an earlier period, but the concept is still the same. You can see that there are two ladies sitting at the table and they're playing a card game. So what historical card games were there? There was Bassett, there was Glick, there was Lands Connect, Swiss Tarot, French Rough, Naughty, Ombre, Catch the Hair, Trapola, just to name a few. Here are more examples of card games. On the left-hand side, you can find an engraving where they are playing cards. On the right-hand side is a painting called Four Gentlemen of High Rank Playing Primero. And this is from the 16th century. And again, as with the previous portrait, and again, as with this painting on the left-hand side, you can see there are people sitting around the table, they're holding their cards, you can see two gentlemen's cards, but you cannot see the cards for the other two gentlemen. You can see there are coins on the table, so they are obviously gambling. If you're interested in what a 17th century playing deck would look like, here is an example. And all of these cards are blank on the back. If you would like your own set of historically accurate playing cards, or if you would like some medieval board games, I highly recommend visiting this website. It's historicgames.com. And from here, just click on the online catalog. And from here, you have your choice if you want a portable fabric game, a period playing cards, wooden games, dice, 
and so on. If you have any questions regarding any of the paintings or engravings or museum examples that I have shown you, here is my Works Cited page. And my Works Cited page continued. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Post your comments below. If you like the video, select thumbs up that you liked it. And as always, please subscribe to be updated when new videos come out. As mentioned before, I will be adding some videos to my channel that explain how to play some of these board games, such as Alquerque and chess. And so please keep an eye out for that. And again, thank you for watching. It originated in India. Do you think are actually, do you think examples so for the left hand side, you can see would like your phone.